What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is gonna be my comprehensive analysis and review of Winter Ignatz and I'll be going over the best builds that you can run on him for different game modes like Ether Raids, Arena and PvE. With that said, I hope you all do enjoy and let us begin. We always get some kind of armored unit as our Christmas freebie and this year is no different. We have got Winter Ignatz this year as a colorless bow armor with 185 BST. He has got Tannenbow Plus as his inheritable weapon and this weapon basically has attack defense unity built into it. So it's actually a really solid inheritable weapon that many units can utilize. Even best friend of Ignatz, Plage and Raphael can make use of this bow and so many of the other bow units. Having unity skill built into a weapon is really solid because not only you can run some other slotty skills instead of running a unity skill but you can also stack up unity skills upon it if you want to. So you could run something like attack resistance unity or attack speed unity and basically cover like 3 stats with the unity effect and also just increases attack by a lot whenever he gets debuffed on his attack stat. So yeah, this weapon will stack up with other unity skills in the slot A. And for his stat spread, Ignatz has got high speed at base 40 for an armor unit and then he has got higher resistance and workable defense stat. His attack is not the highest at base 35 but he can still make it work out and overall he's gonna be this kind of speedy armor unit, kinda similar to Winter Felix. Speaking of Winter Felix, let's compare both of them because they are pretty much the same Tempest Trial Grail option that are armored bows. Felix here, I do have him at plus 10 merge on my free to play account and I have used him quite a lot. You also see him in my Aetherates defense videos. And so as someone who has got a plus 10 Winter Felix, I can definitely say that Winter Ignatz is going to be a bit of an upgrade of him because Ignatz is colorless which means that he has got more neutral matchups across the board unless he's facing some kind of Raven Tome unit. The problem with being a blue bow armor unit like Felix is that many times people are going to be having counters ready for Brave Hector because Brave Hector is also a really solid far save armor unit and Felix being the same color has to take the brunt of that and that is not too fun. Ignatz on the other hand is going to be colorless and he's not going to be having disadvantage against those counters. And Ignatz having better resistance in general is good for a far save unit because you're going to be facing a lot more magical threats in general. And his defense is also not too bad compared to Felix. He's lacking like 2 points but the main thing that Ignatz is kind of lacking is the attack stat and in some cases like Felix's extra attack stat is definitely going to be helping you a lot. So overall both of these are pretty similar but Ignatz is going to be slightly better than Felix because of his color and the extra resistance and not to mention the extra BST which is going to be helping you in arena scoring. Now this is not going to be a free to play comparison but I think that it's worth doing just to explain my point of view of regarding how these different armor units can function because of their speed stat or the lack of that. So here we have got Valentine Fey who's also a really solid colorless um, bow armor who can function as a far save unit and the main difference between these two units is that of course they are you know premium and one is free to play um, but also the fact that Fey does not have a lot of speed. Instead she dumps that in the defense and also a bit in resistance and she also has a lot better attack than Ignatz. Ignatz on the other hand is a lot more speedy. So Ignatz with his speed can definitely help you tank in many cases where he's going to be denying the natural follow ups of many fast opponents but then there's also the fact that there are going to be many units with auto follow up weapons or some kind of guaranteed follow up that are still going to be doubling Ignatz and being a speedy armor unit you do not have too many sloppy skills like fighter skills which are tailored to take advantage of your speed. Special Fighter is pretty much the biggest one for Ignatz. There's Hardy Fighter but Ignatz cannot even have access to that. So there's really not much that these PD armors have got to combat those auto follow up units. And in that case they're still going to be taking the double attack and they're going to be taking quite a bit of damage because their bulk is going to be a bit lower because the other points are gone into their speed. Valentine Fey on the other hand is going to be taking less damage from those auto follow up units because of her increased bulk. So that is pretty much the comparison between speedy armor units and the slow ones. There's definitely some advantages to be had by being speedy, by denying the natural follow ups and also having a better matchup against the wind sweep units in general that you'll have to face. But having this kind of bulk and lowering your speed also means that against auto follow up units and brave weapons in general, you're going to be having much better matchup. So this is just something I wanted to talk about and now let's get back to our boy Ignatz. Ignatz has got speed defense form at 5 star and defense tactic 
And uh, Speed Defense Form is a decent budget skill, but mainly I think he's going to be used for his Tannenbow Plus, which is a really good weapon, and also Rally Attack Speed, which we have been lacking for a while in the Grail Pool. The reason being is that there are a lot of units who have got Rally Attack Speed Plus and another really good skill which you could inherit at the same time. So Ignatz could be used as the base version to inherit the vanilla Rally Attack Speed and then inherit the Plus version and the other good skill. Halloween Laura Shell pretty much being an example because we have gotten her in the free ephemera manuals. So many people who want to have the Rue skill from her as well as the Rally Plus skill can basically use Ignatz for getting those two things. So overall Winter Ignatz is a pretty good free to play far save armor unit with his bulk and his speed. Especially the extra resistance compared to Felix is going to be helping you a lot and I say that as a plus 10 Winter Felix user. Ignatz can also be used in Arena because of the fact that he can score 185 BST there, so he is definitely one of the better free to play Arena options and can also function decently well there. And being colorless can certainly help you in tanking different matchups for modes like Ether Raid's offense, defense, and Arena. And having those neutral matchups, except for Raven Tomes, is going to be helping you a lot and in general is going to be helping you age better from historically what we have seen, kind of stay consistent in their tanking. So that can be a big boon for Ignatz. On the other hand, if you have already invested into some kind of far save unit, or if you have multiple far save units, like if you have got far save Brave Hector and Ascended Fearm, then Winter Ignatz is really not going to be that incentivizing for you because those far save units, which I mentioned right now, are going to be better, and they're also going to be really common, and they can also be sparked in the case of Ascended Fearm, and they already come with their, uh, you know, premium skills. Whereas Ignatz needs a lot of investment, so you'll have to fodder off a bunch of units. And for arena performance and scoring, I feel like Yenfei is just a better free to play option if you are really focusing on the arena scoring. Yenfei has got the infantry movement and also the fact that he can have the damage reduction. He also has distant counter weapons, so I feel like he's going to be performing a lot better than Winter Ignatz, who's an armor unit with one movement in the arena. So all things considered, Winter Ignatz is a pretty good free to play far save armor unit in the Grail Pool, but still it really depends on your barracks and the units that you have already available, and that will change if you invest into him or not. So if you want to build him up on a budget, then you can simply go with Dull Range for Slot B. There are not too many options that you can take for Slot B in general, so this is a pretty nice option for Arena Assault, and you can just run Attack Speed Bond along with the Speed Refine to increase the speed so that he can naturally double. Now, if you want to invest a bit more into him, then I feel like Distant Defense 4 and Special Fighter are going to be really good options. And Special Fighter is pretty much going to be the ideal slot B skill for a lot of his builds because it provides him with the guard effect, which is super good for tanking, and also the special acceleration. So Ignatz can just retaliate back with 2 turn specials like Moonbow, Ruptured Sky, Glimmer, and stuff like that, which is really good. And Farsi of skill is going to be a staple on any kind of Winter Ignatz. You can actually get both of these skills, Special Fighter and Defense Resistance Far Save from the Winter Banner itself with the Sparks as well. So if you're a big Ignatz fan, you could definitely consider it that. So this build pretty much gives you the way of dealing with debuffs with Tan and Bow Plus, getting the Guard Effect with Special Fighter and also getting the Special Acceleration, and then dealing with any kind of buffed opponents with Distant Defense. And this is pretty much going to be the standard Ignatz build, which you're going to be seeing a lot. Armor units are mainly going to be used with their safe skills and Ignatz is no different. So this is a way you can build up Ignatz and most people are going to be doing that kind of thing. Now if you want to build him up without investing into his speed and relying on his natural follow-ups, then you can run Crafty Fighter for his slot B. Mainly because he already deals with the debuffs with his weapon, so Slick Fighter is kind of redundant on Ignatz. And Crafty Fighter can help you with the guard effect and also the auto follow-up. So if you're just going to be investing into his attack and refining his weapon for defense, then this could help you. You can also run attack res unity in slot A and basically cover up both of his defenses and attack. So unity skills do stack up as I mentioned before and this way you can just cover his three stats which are going to be really important and basically boost them up if he takes any kind of debuffs. You can also run a form skill on him because he's a far safe tank here so activating these form skills is incredibly easy and it also has really good synergy with the unity skill and his weapon as it is. You can also run him with Spendthrift Bow if you want to get some extra magical bulk because keep in mind that Spendthrift Bow gives you the minus 7 attack debuff on the opponent so that increases both your defense and resistance in a sense compared to Tannenbow Plus which can only increase your defense and attack. 
And you can deal with the penalty of Spendthrift Bow by running Special Fighter and Moonbow so that he can tally it back with it. And you can run Attack Speed Unity and Slot A so that he can function in both phases and naturally double in both phases as well. You can also run this build with Tannen Bow Plus and like I said, the Unity skills are going to be stacking up. And Speed Resistance Form is a pretty nice option if you want to increase his speed and get a consistent form skill working. Now, in general, I kind of dislike player phase armor unit because inherently they're going to be having a lot more challenges compared to infantry, flying and horse units who can function in the player phase. The first thing is that they need to maintain some kind of armor mark so that they can have that movement to really go in and attack. So that is one of the more annoying things for sure and in general you're not going to be making use of a save skill when you're going to be using this kind of armor unit specifically just for the player phase but if you want to build him up then a ninja yumi build is possible with daring fighter which is an incredibly rare skill so it does provide you with the partial not follow up so that you can get past the enemy's follow-up negation skills and lets you just double with Ninja Yumi and it is also going to be giving you the true damage which Ninja Yumi provides. With this kind of build I feel like investing into his attack kind of matters so that you do not do really low damage in general. And so Sparrow 3 is a nice player phase option which can be stacked up with Blade Session to just boost his attack and speed. Daring Fighter is going to be helping you quad attack once you are in that threshold but reaching that threshold could be annoying at times. And another argument against this build is that you can literally run some kind of high attack armor unit like maybe plays in Raphael with you know Bolt Fighter and Brave Bow and he can also quad attack similar to Ignatz. Ignatz here can get the true damage with Ninja Yumi so that is pretty nice. Again, this is not the most optimal build, but still an option if you want to build up some kind of player phase Ignatz. And because he can be used in Arena due to his 185 BSC scoring, he can be built up with this kind of build with Distant Defense 4 and Attack Defense form. You're going to be facing a lot of ranged units in Arena, and a far safe unit like Ignatz can certainly help you with retaliating back with Special Fighter and then having Distant Defense 4 which can neutralize any of the buffs that those units might have. And in Arena, people are going to be running the Rally skills and the Visible buffs, so Distant Defense 4 gives you really, really nice value. Again, if you want to build him up so that he can get more resistance, then Spendthrift Bow is also an option because of its attack debuff, and Attack Speed Unity is again an option if you just want to outspeed a lot more units. So investing into Speed of Ignatz is certainly going to be helping you with the natural doubles. And in Ether Raids, far safe tanks are going to be most useful because you're going to be facing Note with a lot of cavalry threats. And Ignatz can certainly work a bit better than Winter Felix because of the reasons I stated before. So you can run a build like this again. Distant Defense 4 is going to be helpful because you might face Legendary Secret boosting up the entire attack of the team. And then you also have other visible buff teams which are going to be annoying. So Distant Defense 4's buff neutralization is extremely good. Tannenbow really shines in Aether Raids where you're going to be facing a lot of shrines, debuffs in general, uh, you know, Triandra as well. So Tannenbow is going to be helping you with the unity effect. Mystic Boost can really help you with the self-sufficiency and healing and that can be really helpful in Aether Raids offense on a far safe tank. And this will also disable the Wrathful Staff of Staff Units so it makes your matchup better against them. Attack Speed Unity is also incredibly potent on Winter Ignatz and Aether Raid's offense because you can just boost up his attack and speed and you don't really care if he gets debuffed or gets panicked because he has got the Unity effect and that is going to be making him really really strong. So that is a fantastic option especially when you're going to get targeted by Bright Shrine. Many times in the light season if you're going to be using Mila then she is perhaps going to be absorbing the defense debuff or Dark Shrine debuff on herself. So Ignatz is not going to be able to make full use of Talon Bow in those cases. But with Attack Speed Unity, you're going to be just, just opening him to all kinds of offensive debuffs which are going to be making him really strong. And that's why Defense Resistance Far Safe can be really helpful and Mystic Boost is going to be providing you again with the self-sufficiency. His resistance is going to be helpful as a far safe tank so perhaps you could try and stack up a bit more defense that he's kind of lacking compared to his resistance and that could certainly help you tank better in Aether Raid's offense. He can also be used in Aether Raid's defense and you guys have seen me use Winter Felix in Aether Raid's defense as well. So Ignatz functions pretty similarly but of course has better matchups in many scenarios unless he's facing Raven Tomes and you can just run him with a unity skill. And if there are going to be players with Bright Shrines, Temari Dagger or Sabotage skills, then Ignatz definitely gets really powerful and can get really annoying. And Special Fighter is incredibly, incredibly important. In general, getting the guard effect is so important in Aether Raid's defense. I cannot stress that enough. And that's why Special Fighter with this kind of build is really useful. 
So you could make him fast and also stack up his defense whenever speed defense form gets released as a sacred seal. And this is a build which I run on my Winter Felix himself and you have seen this in action as well. So this might look a bit weird but this actually works because you're denying any kind of sniping from the opponent with your far safe tank and you're gonna be having the distant defense 4 which can be really helpful because most players do use visible buffs in Aetherate's offense. And then if you're gonna be running him in a Catria ball with Bright Catria then he can quad attack with Bolt Fighter. Bolt Fighter is actually really good because many times people are gonna be using tanks like Brave Hector, Fallen Needle Guard and stuff like that who have got follow-up negation. So Bolt Fighter helps you bypass that and that is not possible with this special fighter build. And that's why I think it's so important in Aetherate's defense. Reindeer Bow is actually a really solid option that you can run on him because it provides you with extra defense and the guard effect. There are just so many times when I've screwed up something like Ascended Fjorm who can take on these kinds of units but because of the guard effect of Reindeer Bow, she just gets rendered useless against the next attack of my unit and my next unit is usually going to be dual lift. So, so the guard effect of Reindeer Bow in general is going to be helping your team as well. I can absolutely vouch for that because of seeing so many scenarios where Reindeer Bow just won me the match and then he can just run far safe skill and have some kind of form skill to boost up his stats. Now there are going to be two skills which I haven't really mentioned here. One of them is going to be Deadeye which many people are going to be asking me about. And personally I don't think Deadeye is the best option for Ignatz because he cannot run Time Pulse. And if you run Slaying both on him so that he can retaliate back with Deadeye with Special Fighter then you're missing out on some extra effect and some extra power. Like if you're running Slaying Bow then you're not going to be getting the extra attack and defense from something like a Tannen Bow or Reindeer Bow and that is a big deal because Ignatz doesn't have the highest attack stat and Deadeye as it is is a win more special kind of like Glimmer. So if you do more damage Deadeye will give you even more damage and Ignatz because of not having the highest attack can struggle at times uh, with using Deadeye to get some damage output. The fact that it can pierce through damage reduction is really helpful but in general I personally don't prefer running Deadeye on a unit like him so that's why I didn't really recommend it to you um, in this kind of build video. And another option which people might ask about are going to be close foil, close counter or close reversal builds. And I don't really think it's that optimal on him because he can function as a far safe tank and just run skills like unity skills just in defense 4 to give him more stats in the slot A compared to these close skills which could give him the stats but they do not really give you the extra effects compared to some of these skills. And it's a lot better to specialize your armor unit to face certain kinds of enemies instead of just making them this kind of universal tanking option. In my personal opinion not every kind of armor unit can do that and certainly not Winter Ignatz in my opinion. So you could just specialize him with the far safe build and run a skill that can give you an extra effect and more stats in the slot A. So that is just my opinion from experience of playing this game and uh, I did provide a lot of the build options. So I hope you all enjoyed this review. If you did then make sure to share this video with your friends who are looking forward to building up Winter Ignatz. And if you enjoyed this video then leaving a like and subscribing helps out tremendously. And if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more free to play analysis videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I wish YouTube sub boxes were about as consistent as Christmas giving us armor units. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.